Welcome back in 740 in the morning and on Monday Tuesday. As we know, the coronavirus pandemic has had a huge impact on many people's finances. And now some of you may be questioning your financial future. So this morning we're looking at some of the biggest questions you may have about investments. Stuart Welch with the Welch Group, regular guest here on Good Day, joins us this morning for part one of a new series called Investing for the Ages. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Janice. How are you doing? Good. So today I understand we're focusing on folks in their 20s and 30s, right? We are. And uh, Janice, the, the Senate Republicans just passed a $1 trillion stimulus package, a, a new stimulus package. And what it really points out is that an awful lot of people aren't saving enough money. So we want to start with how do you invest if you're in your 20s and 30s? Uh, and there are several points, but the first one is, is you need to invest now. And I think what holds a lot of people back, a lot of young people back is they don't know anything about investing. So mm -hmm. what we're going to do this morning is we're going to tell them exactly what to do okay. while they're learning how to do that. So we want to start with, uh, I think the first thing is start now. And the place to start would be your 401k. So if you have a 401k where they, uh, uh, well, particularly if they're doing some matching, you want to start there. And if you say, well, where do I invest there? I would start with a, uh, a U.S. large cap index fund. And every one of those plans will have one. If you have any confusion about that, call HR and they can put somebody in touch with you to help you get started. So you want to start there. If you don't have that and you're going to do it personally, you want to use a discount broker like Charles Schwab. And I'm going to tell you what to invest in. So we're going to make this really, really easy. Mm -hmm. You go into Schwab or you just go into Google and you type in SPY, SPY, SPY. That is a U.S. large cap index fund hmm. that invests in 500 of the largest companies in the U.S. And that's just a great place to start. Okay. So that, I, I would imagine a lot of people would never even think about uh, going in that direction. And a lot of us who have 401ks, um, we may not realize how much we have or how much we are investing in it. So sometimes, and you kind of alluded to this, you can invest more than you may be investing already out of your paycheck. Yeah, I think you want to start with people will ask me, okay, I, I got it. I'm going to invest in this particular ETF, SPY. Uh, how much should I be investing? And I, I'm going to say that if you're in your 20s and 30s, you need to be investing a minimum of 10%. If you're in your 30s and are just getting started, that number probably needs to be 12, 15%. Uh, and that should be enough and that we're all stocks uh, because you've got a really long time for retirement. You can afford to uh, live through the ups and downs in the stock market. Uh, but you want to you want to be sure that you're getting that money invested. And, and if you stay in that 10, 15 percent range, mm -hmm. that should be enough to get you to financial independence by what I would call normal retirement age. Let's call that 65. If you wanted to invest, say, 20 percent, that should shave off a decade or more. Uh, wow. on that financial independence. So you might be able to retire at 55, somewhere between 50 and 55. Yeah, I was gonna say, Stuart, right now, we are fortunate that the market is back up, but when you're in your 20s and 30s, it sure is a lot easier watching it fluctuate. Yeah, it is. And uh, you know, it just, the fluctuations don't really matter when you have lots and lots of time. And that's why I'm suggesting 100% in stocks, because again, you have so much time. And uh, it, you know, I think what's really important is you get started doing something. Mm -hmm. And again, if you can target that 10%, it's gonna get you there. And then start learning about investing. Uh, you know, most people, once they have money invested, they get a little more interested in it, uh, particularly as those funds begin to accumulate and they'll begin to learn more about it. So that's the place to start. And next week, we'll cover the people in their uh, 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 40s and 50s. It's a little bit different investment strategy okay. for them. And then the final week, we'll do 60s and 70s and beyond. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Stuart. Thank you, Jay.